everybody, my name is Sorsha and I'm a nutritionist, a healthy lifestyle blogger and I also have a long term chronic illness which I live with all the time, obviously, because it's long term. But this video is about my journey um, to independence. Also, it's about how I got on in my second semester at UCD. So if you haven't already watched it, I would advise you to watch the first semester which kind of told the story of how I got to UCD and this video is about after Christmas so semester two. So now I'm going to go into what I got up to in semester two because I did say in semester one that uh, the semester one video that I was going to get up to more and I did. So there was mostly good stuff and like maybe like two not so good things that were not my fault but they still happened but we dealt with them and I'm okay. I am alive. One of the first things that I done when I got back after the winter break or Christmas break is I went to a conference for Erspin. I was invited to come to that. They talked about enteral and parental nutrition so basically it was a conference for doctors and nutritionists and dietitians about nutrition and I was really honoured to be invited to come to that. I really enjoyed it. I learned so much from it and I met loads of people as well and it was just great and yeah it was great to get to go to something like that it was in the Viva Stadium also which I've never been there before so that was great as well and I had a really good day then things got a little bit crazy so I kind of whenever there's something happening like a concert or a show it's normally like in Dublin or Belfast so either way I would have to travel, probably stay over. And I noticed that Lord of the Dance was playing in Borgash. And I've never seen Lord of the Dance. I think I've seen River Dance, but not Lord of the Dance. And I used to have like a video when I was like younger that I used to watch it. It's the one that had Michael Flatley in it. So I was like, well, I don't have to pay for accommodation. I'm already here. I'll see I'll go to Lord of the Dance. So I was able to get tickets and me and my care, we went to Lord of the Dance and it was amazing. Loved it. Would recommend going to see it. Definitely. It was so, so good. And then I thought, well, I know that Michael Flatley's like in Dublin. Um, He obviously wasn't dancing in the show, but I thought, try and meet them or even try to meet some of the cast you know get a few pictures that kind of thing so I asked around and I was told to stand outside a door now this is like just ordinary door outside that goes onto the street so it probably comes out from the dressing rooms I assume and told to stand and wait there and me and my care for like a good few minutes were the only two people standing there um and it was kind of like it wasn't like warm so it was getting cold, it was late, but then other people started to kind of come now, not like a big crowd of people, but yeah, people started to come and I started to say, well, obviously this is where the dancers are going to come out because other people are standing here. So I waited and waited and then the performers started coming out. I got some really good pictures with the fellow who played Lord of the Dance that night. Um, I was really happy. To get a picture with the fairy um she because well she's my favorite obviously and that was cool so then people started to leave and i was like yeah like michael flatley's probably not coming out that door he's probably gonna he's probably already gone um like it was this was like 40 minutes after the show so he's probably gone by now he's not likely to be coming out this door and I was like, let's let's go. Like we've got like loads of really good pictures. We've had a really good time. The show was brilliant. Yeah. So 
We called a taxi and we were waiting for the taxi. My carer went round the corner to see maybe the taxi had was there because it wasn't where we were. And I was just standing there and the next thing the doors open and like these security guards come out and like Michael Flatlight comes out. Now I have terrible eyesight and so much so that you could be somebody that I've known for years and you could like walk right up to me and I have this look on my face like who is this but really I do know who you are it just takes my brain like a few minutes to kind of connect and be like name you know download all the information but this didn't happen this was like instant that instantly I was like oh my god that's Michael Flatley so I was just standing there probably with my mouth open and he just come over and he like smiled and like he hugged me, which um, I'm not a hugger. I get very awkward with hugs. I, especially when they're not announced, like I'm going to hug you, like, random hugs. Um, so in my head, I was like, this is Michael Flatley. Don't be weird. So I was trying not to go off stuff like this, but I got a really nice picture. Um, I was in shock most of it. I did talk to him. I don't think I said anything stupid. I think I just said the basics where I was from and I said about watching him in the video and uh, yeah, but he was so, so nice. He was so lovely and that just made my night. The whole way back in the taxi, I was like, oh my God, I met Michael Flatley. Oh my God, I met Michael Flatley. So that happened. Now, I I always tell people that I can go from being really, really well to really, really sick within a matter of hours. And it's really hard to believe, but this is a prime example. At around, you see now, two o'clock that morning, I woke up and I felt like my blood sugars were really low. I can feel when they're really, really low. I don't need alarms or anything to tell me. So I got up and I was going to like do the whole check in my blood sugar thing because I thought maybe my sensor isn't reading properly because it had an alarm to tell me anything. But I thought, no, I need to actually get glucose in me straight away. So I got out of bed, went, grabbed a glucose drink and like chugged it. And then I called for my care who was in the room next and I was just like blood sugars are low I like I need help or maybe did I text her I don't know I think I rang her I think I was kind of too far gone to do the whole texting um she was in within two minutes like and she came in and sat down on the bed at this point I think I had drank two glucose drinks I just chugged them down one after the other And I I had checked my blood sugars and they were 2.7, which is very low. Uh, My care came in, she sat down on the bed and that's all I remember until I woke up. And there was uh, the medical people from UCD and ambulance people. So I was taken away in ambulance to St. Vincent's where I've never been before. Nobody knows me. And I thankfully Kadra had taken, I have a special folder done up with like my back, my history, all my doctors, all my information in case there is a time where I'm taken into hospital and I'm not able to, to tell all these things. So she brought that with her. She was so good. She'd done everything that needed to be done. I didn't need to worry. By the time I got to the hospital, to be honest, I was fine because I had, the sugar had gotten into my system. But I was, I did go unconscious and I did have like a fit, short fit, about um, 20 seconds. And I was unconscious for two minutes, which I think is probably what it normally is for me. Um, but they done tests like in the hospital, blood pressure, stuff like that and monitored me. And then they started to do things like brain scans, which I've, I've never had a brain scan before. So I did agree to that without much persuasion because I've been watching Grace Anatomy and I thought I'd like to see my brain I got to see my brain I didn't really know what I was looking at but it looked all right to me um and then they were like we want to keep you overnight because your calcium's lower than normal 
And I was trying to say, you know, my calcium normally is on the lower side and this and that, but um, I thought, right, well, one night won't kill me. But I ended up staying that night in a and even though they told me, like, we have a bed for you. This was like 12 hours later. They were still telling me we have a bed for you. So the next day I was like, look, I feel fine. I don't think there's anything else that you can do for me. I need to leave. So I kind of, I just, I think I discharged myself, which is the first time I've ever done that. I went back to UCD and I slept. So that went from like, 100 to zero within a few hours and that's how things happen but like I was fine the things we had put in place for if that ever happened they worked which is good to know because I mean the only way to test that they work is if something like this happens so something like that has happened now everything was fine I was fine so if it ever happens again Hopefully it doesn't. We know that what we have in place is good. Right, so the next thing is something that I am very proud of myself because it was like a big step for me to do it is I um, I bought a boat. No, I didn't. <laughs> um, I went to Cork on a train, stayed overnight with a girl who so amazing because I couldn't have done it without her but I have like literally only met her she was in the dance is in the dance society and I met her through ballet classes and the reason that I asked her if she would come with me on this trip is because she's doing like pre-med so (laughs) I mean it made sense to me but Mira was so good to agree to do this because first of all mum couldn't come because like that wasn't fair her having to travel from Donegal to Dublin to Cork to stay overnight to Dublin to Cork and my sister wasn't there either and the, oh first of all the reason I was going to Cork just not a random trip to Cork is because UCD um the dance society competition team so the fusion crew the hip-hop crew the irish dancing crew we're all competing in it's the intervarsities dance competition so all colleges with dance societies can enter and compete in different like irish dancing hip-hop there's um contemporary jazz and then there's a mixed piece so I, i'm not on the competition team because they're absolutely amazing I mean they're like professional dancers it's unreal how good they are um but I am part of the dance society and it's been a big part of why I love UCD is just feeling part of a team and even though I'm not on team but feeling part of a group of people and just like trying all types of dance because I love dancing so I did really want to go also because when I was at Letterkenny IT, which is now called ATU, I did like start up a dance society and with the help of another fella called David, we, well, he done all the like choreographing and stuff, put together a mixed piece and LYIT was going to enter the interversities for the first time that year. But then um, the big COVID-19 came and ruined it all. So we didn't actually get to go and that year it was in Galway. So I really wanted to go to this competition just to like see what the crack is. And it was in Cork this year. So I was like, right, well, Dublin to Cork, no problem. Now, actually, it is a lot easier than it sounds because there is a direct train that goes from Dublin, Houston Station to Cork. And then... So I've I've been on trains before. There's no trains directly to Donegal, but I have been on a train before. So I knew that was the easy part. Um then obviously I got I got accommodation, like pretty good accommodation, um, for a very reasonable price. And it was right beside UCC. Uh, now I didn't realise at the time that the 
actual competition was in the Royal Opera House, but I mean, it's not that far to walk. And I had all that sorted. I just needed somebody to come with me because as much as I'd love to say I could have went on my own, I, I can't go away and overnights on my own without somebody there in case something happens. And I love to push the boundaries, but like there's pushing the boundaries and then there's just being stupid. So I needed somebody to come with me and they didn't need to be medically trained or anything. They just needed to be able to ring 999. And yeah, so I was trying to think, I asked around some of the girls in the dance society if there was anybody coming that wasn't competing on the team um, that would be willing to stay with me. Like I would have the accommodation paid for and everything, but unfortunately there wasn't. So I asked Mira and she was so good to agree to move her schedule about and come with me on the trip. And neither of us had been to Cork. She's from Canada. So it was a bit of an adventure. Neither of us really knew where we were going, <laughs> but Google Maps is great. And it was a really good trip. And of course, the competition was brilliant. UCD done amazing. They got loads of awards. So here's, if you saw, if you follow me on Instagram, then you would have seen I put up a little video, but like they got two um, choreography awards. Uh, for their um, contemporary piece and the jazz piece. And that was Teresa and Stella, amazing choreographers. And their hip hop piece was so good. And so was their Irish dancing piece. And they've performed them a few times as well at UCD. And they're just amazing. And then their mixed piece. I mean, who doesn't love a bit of ABBA? It was really good so I was there with my UCD dance society hoodie cheering them on and then I was in the front row watching I don't know I think it would had been their mix piece and then they announced and now for the first time ATU and I was like oh my god and who comes out but David and he's it's like Similar enough to the concept he was going to use for the one that we were going to do, but he he's really good at bringing in different people's talents because obviously there's AT is not as big a college, so there's not as many dancers. So he was really good at taking people's strengths and using it, and there were some really cool moments in them. And he won, well, the ATU, but David won the choreography award for the mixed pieces and it was so well deserved so he that was really good to actually get to see them and all um so it was really good trip and went down stayed over that night and came back the next day and obviously that kind of happened all in a sort of space of time going to lord of the dance i think was on the friday and then on this yeah I spent all day Saturday in the hospital. No, no. Actually, Lord of the Dance was a Thursday. Friday morning, I went into the hospital, spent all day Friday in the hospital, Friday night. Discharged myself Saturday. And I had uh, Sunday then to kind of rest and then Monday to kind of get myself ready to go to Cork. Um... I also mixed up the times. I, I assumed that this competition was just like a little two-hour evening thing, which is really stupid to think. Like, I should have realised how many colleges there was. It's an all-day thing. So I had the train booked to get us there on the Tuesday, like, midday kind of thing, so that we'd have, like, a little bit of time to chill before we went to the thing. But actually, it's... A, Started at, well, like before 10 probably. Um, so I didn't miss the first kind of first part because I was going to get like a five o'clock in the morning train. But um, we got it started I, and I'm really glad that I did do it because I know I can now. Another thing I got to do this semester was I got to do 
Um, well, they've kind of been coined pers- patient perspective talks um, about basically the ones I've done so far of about me being on TPN, which is the tube feed that I get. And I done a video of it here. And I have two videos up, one about living with intestinal failure and one about me putting myself up on my TPN. So I was asked by UCC first, um, so their dietetics department to do a talk to their dietetic students about what it's like to be on TPN and well, through Zoom. Um, and actually the day that I was doing it was the day that I was in St. Vincent's Hospital. So I was doing it with like hospital in the background. But then I was also then, I got to do it for UCD dietetics department and that one was in person. And I think they went, I think they went okay. I mean, I enjoyed doing them. I don't really get that nervous, just a little bit, because I don't really, I can't really say anything wrong because I'm talking about myself and my experience. It's so I don't have to remember terms or um, long words or calculations or anything like that. So I done those two talks and they went pretty well. I also done a talk for Fresenius Cabe, which are the company that provides me with my TPN. Um, I done a talk to their, actually I done two talks, one at the very beginning of um, kind of before I was like on the day I was moving back to college after Christmas and one kind of, in them like near the end it was not only a few weeks ago really and just before easter and they were both kind of me just talking about my experience on tpn and yeah so that could be something that i could maybe do in the future it would be an option the next thing that happened was not happened but the next thing that i did was I went to two balls. I went to the Performing Arts Ball, which is the ball for the Dance Society and the Musical Theatre Society. And then I had a great time at it. So some pictures and it was great. And then I also went to the UCD Ball, which was at the very end of the semester when all classes are done. And it was amazing. Apparently they haven't had one in 10 years. And it was in like a real proper like nightclub and I had a great time at it as well. And I did stay the whole night. So it ended at half two in the morning and it started at ten. Yeah, half ten. So I did I did stay the whole night. Now like I probably was like the first out of there, but I was thinking, oh, I need to get my taxi before everyone else gets all the taxis. But my taxi driver must have just been around the corner because he was there in half, like 30 seconds. So I had a brilliant night at it as well. Now, on for the Performing Arts Ball, um, that particular day, I woke up and I felt like I had a head cold. Now, that day also, I was doing the talk for Fasini's Cave during the day. And I was going to be coming back then at class in the morning, talk in the middle of the day, come back, get ready, go to perform an arts ball. And then the next morning I had clinics in St. James's early. And then I was planning to come home a day early to surprise my mum and dad for Easter weekend. So that was going to be a busy time. Woke up Wednesday morning with a head cold and I was just like, oh no. But I did do a COVID test because I don't want to be spreading COVID around everywhere. It came back negative. So I was like, right, well, it is only a head cold then. That's fine. Um, I can self-medicate with lamb slips. I'll be fine. So as the day went on, I did start like feeling like I just did not feel great. But I'm kind of the kind of person who just kind of pushes through, especially if I have a list of things to do. I hate not being able to tick them off. So I went to class, done the talk, came back, kind of lay around for a little while, seeing if I could rest. But um, And then I got ready for the ball, went to the ball, did have a great time, but was like 
had a really sore throat and was coughing all the time. So I did kind of, once I got back, I was kind of glad to get back, but I didn't sleep that whole night because I was up coughing so much. I think I slept about two hours, which is really bad considering the next day how busy I was going to be. I already had all my stuff packed away and I got up that morning and I don't know what came over me. I I just got up really early because I wasn't sleeping anyway and I decided to put on a load of washing and then I put it into the dryer before I left to go to St. James's. Now the clinics, first of all, they were held up so I was not away as early as I expected. When I did ring the taxi to get back to UCD to get my bags, I knew I was going to have to pretty much go straight to Bulsaris to get my bus. And I realised, oh shit, I have washing in the dryer. The taxi got held up because of the traffic. At this point, I wasn't going to make my bus unless I literally flew into my apartment, grabbed the bag, went straight back out to the taxi and the taxi went straight to Bulsaris. So I asked the taxi driver would he wait 10 minutes for me till I went in and got my bags. And I texted my flatmate and said, can you go into the laundry room? And I told them the washing machine or the dryer number and said, can you like put it into my basket and just like put it in front of the door or if my door's open, just throw it into the room. Um, I wouldn't have time to, sh- to sort it out, but at least it won't be in the dryer. So um, Alex was good enough to do that for me. I went into the room, threw everything in. While I was doing that, I boiled the kettle and I made up like a thermal thing of lamp soup. And I was going to bring that in the bus with me. <laughs> and then um, came out the taxi driver. Oh, he was so good. He got me there in time. I got on the bus and I sat in the front and the bus driver was like, are you okay? And I thought, I must look pretty bad. Now, another thing is my phone was playing up. It was, the battery was dying on it. So I hadn't had time to charge it. So I asked the bus driver, would he plug my phone into the front of the bus? So I had charge to text my aunt who was collecting me from Lifford when I got there. Um, I don't know why, but it didn't charge it, but it made it not die. Because when he gave it back to me in Monaghan, it still was like at 5%, but it hadn't died. So I just turned the phone off. And when I got to Oma, I texted my aunt or my uncle to say, I'm in Oma now, phones, the battery's dying, so if I don't answer. Um, But I said the time I'd be there. It was the worst bus journey of my life. Between me being sick and having no phone to like even listen to music or anything to kind of take my mind off it. And then just, yeah, the two. And it was really hot on the bus as well. Or maybe I just had a temperature. I don't know. But I got off the bus. I got home. I got home to mum. She sorted me out. I thought I just have to stay in bed the next day and just rest. And I did, but I didn't feel any better. And on Saturday, I didn't feel any better. And mum was just like, we need to take you into the hospital to get the chest x-ray because I would have chest issues. We don't want it to be a chest infection. So I kind of agreed. She also said, you're not going back to ECD on Monday, which was plan to go back have classes and I remember normally I would like put up a fight like I'll be fine but I just was so tired (laughs) I was just like okay and realistically I knew in my head I wasn't going to be well enough for another bus bus journey back so I got into A&E and I had the flu now I mean like the actual flu like the the one you get the vaccine for which I have I get the vaccine every year So I probably would have been 10 times worse if I didn't, hadn't gotten the vaccine. But I had the flu and I also had a chest infection and I had to go on oxygen 
for t- I was in hospital for 10 days and for like I think about seven of those 10 days they couldn't take me off oxygen or my oxygen levels would drop. I was on IV antibiotics for the chest infection. I was given antivirals. I was on extra steroids. <laughs> I was on a lot of stuff and nebulizers. Um, and come maybe the mid week, I started to feel a little bit better. And then I got out following Monday and I came back to UCD on Wednesday. So yes, the moral of the story is when you think it's a head cold and it's not COVID, it might be the flu. And also, if you say that you have a head cold, or if you say you have the flu when you just have a head cold, you obviously have never had the flu before. So that happens. And the last kind of big thing that I done was I went on a trip myself um, to the Epic, well, the Epic Museum and the Jeannie Johnson Famine Ship. So I had already been to the Epic Museum before with Mum, but we didn't get to finish the whole thing. So I had always kind of thought I wanted to go back. And I mean, people people are really good. Like, they will go places with you. But I always feel like if I'm asking someone, oh, will you go with me? They think I'm asking them because, you know, I need want someone to look after me. Most of the time, I can look after those kind of things myself during the day and that. So I just thought, look, I can use the Dublin bus, get make my way in and make my way back. So that's what I done. I got the bus from UCD in um to like the area. I'm so bad. Like I, I do know where I'm going, but see names on streets or whatever, couldn't tell you. But anyway, I made it there <laughs> and I, I would really recommend the Jeannie Johnson um, tour if you're into like history at all. It's really good and the tour guides are so funny and really informative. And then after I went to the Epic Museum and like went, I spent a lot of time in there. Actually, you do need to give yourself a good like hour and a half at the least to get around the Epic, um, the museum part because there's so much in it. And if you want like, have a proper look at it and then I went back to UCD so it was a full day kind of thing and to most people it would seem like nothing because look you're in Dublin already you're not you're take I literally just had to take one bus that took me to a place and then I walked over the bridge it wasn't a big trip journey wise like um, distance wise but doing it by myself and getting everything sorted bus times getting to the bus stop in time and also looking after my blood sugars making sure they didn't drop low and kind of also listening to my body as to am I too tired maybe to um, get the bus should I just get a taxi because afterwards I had planned to get the bus back but, um, well, it was kind of raining a lot that day as well. But there was one bus that would take me halfway and I had to then get another bus. So I just um, got the taxi to drop me off to the bus that would take me directly into UCD. And that's just, I made that decision because I felt tired and I felt I just couldn't manage to walk the distance to the other bus. So that went really well and I would definitely try and do some more of those trips as well. So that's all the kind of big things that happened. A few other things that did like happen um, this semester is I started taking handstand classes with Tribe Fitness. I'd seen them perform at Perform Ireland festivals before they do like the hoops and the um, you know, the poles dancing and acrobatics, they're they're amazing. You should like I don't know, they're probably on YouTube, like Tribe Fitness. And um Lizette Croy is like I think she's like the owner, but she is one of the teachers and she's so funny, so amazing. So they offer classes, they offer online ones as well, but the some of them you have to be in person with the handstand one. 
So I made my way over from UCD to um, where where they have their classes, and I was taken. I've taken a few. I really like them, and I I'm hoping soon I'll be able to do a handstand. Um, I could kind of do it before I left. I took gymnastics for a lot over the summer before I went to UCD. I'm going back to it this summer, um, but. I just got it before I left. So then, you know, you have to keep up the training. So, yeah, that's my next goal is to be able to do a handstand. But as you can see, I'm not too far off. And I also started taking ballet classes with Louise Darcy. I missed the kind of... um, The dance society is great in their workshops and everything, but they're on different days and different times, depending on who can like the person who's teaching them when they're free because they are students. Um, So I must kind of have a set day, set time, every week, ballet or whatever dance class. So I looked up different ballet classes that are for adults that are near and Louise Darcy is one of them. So I really enjoy taking her classes. I wish I'd known about them earlier. I could have taken them first semester too. But now I know that when I go back in September, I can go back to her classes. And then what else? So I don't dance. Oh, yeah. And like I don't some like res life. So res life is for residents that live on UCD and they do different trips and stuff. So I went to Emerald Park. It's Tato Park, but they changed the name to Emerald Park um, with res life and I went on pretty much every single roller coaster in the whole park um, because um, and I really enjoyed it because I love roller coasters. And then I also, there was like different events as well. There was quizzes and there was, I joined the book club. And I, I think like I only went twice because they did every two weeks. And I think I forgot then one week. But um, I know it's there now. And they also done on Valentine's Day, they actually done a really funny thing. They done like Take Me Out, the TV show, um, which is hilarious. So I, I went to that event as well. So that's kind of the whole second semester. I mean, academically, my classes, obviously, like I said, because I moved part time, they were a lot more manageable and a lot like I was able to put a lot more into them um to do well and I could actually see that kind of in my results so far hopefully they keep (laughs) hopefully the ones that are coming in show the same but I felt anyway that I was able to put more into it and still like learning so much from my lecturers and my classmates who are amazing I'll have like probably a new set of classmates next year but all the ones that I met this year are so amazing so intelligent and they're really bright futures ahead of them and really inspirational for me to hear their like where they're going and where they've been and what they've done and gives me like ideas as well um so I'm looking forward to going back in September obviously I'm gonna try and enjoy my summer now at home try to relax not very good at doing that but try to kind of get into a routine home routine now and then get back to it in september thank you so much for watching this video and like i said be sure to watch part part one um so you can see from when i started to first semester to semester two all in all i had a really good semester And I love UCD so much and living independently and just being able to, I don't know, grow up. (laughs) Um, I really, really love it. And even though it is a challenge at times, I would definitely recommend even like I can't just say even if you have a chronic illness, you can do it because chronic illnesses are different for everybody. Like. I, I don't like when people say that because it makes them, if somebody who really is not able to do that, they feel really bad. But 
push your lum like push your limits and you will find where you're happy. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna continue doing that and hope you hope you like this video and if you did please hit that like button and hit the share button so you can share the love and also if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and thank you